Okay, um, uh, welcome very much. And we are continuing with our Vectorborne uh, lecture series. And uh, today we are going to continue with onchocerciasis, just picking up from where we stopped with the other filarial worms. So kindly feel free to like and subscribe our YouTube channel. Okay, so today we're going to pick up with onchocerciasis and it's basically a chronic filarial disease. All right, okay. So we're saying chronic because it takes time before the the effects of the filarial worms actually get to be seen. And uh, as opposed to the other ones, the onchocerciasis or the filarial worms for onchocerciasis have a higher affinity for the subcutaneous uh, and connective tissues. Okay, so it is important to know because there's a difference between it and elephantiasis because for elephantiasis, uh, the filarial worms has an affinity to the lymphatic uh, tissues, okay, or basically the lymphatic, lymphatic system. But now for nongosarcasis, um, the filarial worms usually want to go to the subcutaneous tissues or and the connective tissues of the infected person. So the disease is also called river blindness, and you'll see later on why they called it this way. We had um, a lot of these cases occurring and the ultimate effect is one, one of the complications is blindness. And because the people who are affected were mostly along the river, so it was called river blindness. So this was happening in West Africa. So the factor for onchocerciasis is black fly, okay? Black fly, and the uh, bi biological name is simulium, the simulium species. Uh, so in Western Africa, the common vector is what we call simulium damnosum. In East Africa, the common vector is Simulium neve, but it's most common in West Africa. So mostly you'll see Simulium damnosum being the most prevalent vector. Okay, so the vector is a black fly, it's called the black fly. It's good to know the other name of the fly. And then the genus name for the species is just Simulium. So the, the causative organism itself is Onchocerca volvulus. Okay, Onchocerca volvulus is the causative organism. So just basically to look at the pattern, uh, Onchocerca is, is mostly found in Western Uganda, South Sudan, and some parts of DRC. And these black flies, the Smolium, they have an ability to travel for so long, eight kilometers in a day, you can imagine. So the Smolium fly, uh, it breeds in fast running, well aerated rivers okay or turbulent areas such as the waterfalls and rapids so very important to know is that the the simulium or the black fly they breed in rapid moving water so they don't breed in uh, stagnated water like what we will see in malaria or sorry malaria or elephantiasis because those ones the vector which is anopheles mosquito they breed well in stagnated water Okay, so it's very hard to find a place where we have high prevalence of malaria or elephantiasis to be the same case for um, um, onchocerciasis because onchocerciasis needs water that is fast moving. Okay, so like rivers, waterfalls, and such places. So that's important. So the eggs of the simulium fly are able to develop into larvae only in water that is rich in oxygen. That's why we need fast moving turbulent water because oxygen or air is able to mix with the water. So what is the mode of transmission? So the river blindness is mostly obviously spread uh, from person to person and it's through this bite of the vector, the black fly. So black fly feeds during the day, both inside and outside of the house. So usually during the morning hours or the late evening, Again, another very significant difference from it and uh, things like um, Anopheles mosquito, because Anopheles is, has a nocturnal tendency, it mostly will bite late into the evening going on to the night, okay? But not during the day. But for Simulium or the black fly, it bites during the day. So that is important, even outside the house. So again, you can see these disparities, okay? So even if you're using a net at night, you still get uh, beaten by a black fly during the day when you're working or something of that sort. So the, black, the transmission cycle is nothing very peculiar. It's just the black fly takes up a microfilarine, 
okay when it's like a person who has been in, infected by this uh organism the oncosaka volvulus in the blood okay so once it is in the stomach the, the normal process the microfilari uh, penetrates the stomach travels to the thoracic muscle where it develops okay uh, it develops completely then they move to the head just like what we were talking about um when we were, we were looking at uh usherary bancrofty elephantasis so you can also check out that video so once the larvae okay once the larvae that now is in, has been attached has gone to the head now and it goes to the, the mouth where now it's supposed to feed on another person when the fly bites again it injects the larvae of the oncosaka volvulus okay into the skin of the healthy person okay now this larvae as opposed to what we would see in elephantasis, the lung will not go to the lymphatic system. It will go to the subcutaneous tissue, and that is where it will stay and develop into adult worms. So it takes a couple of years, imagine. And that's why I said it will take time before you even start realizing you have this problem. So as you can see, um, you have this fly. It took blood meal okay it went to the stomach so we took a microfilary eye it went to the stomach developed into a larvae okay passed through the thoracic uh muscles went to the head to the mouth then bites and and spreads the larvae to the skin the skin the the, the now the larvae develops into an adult and adult worms do what they do best they reproduce to produce microfilary eye okay Good. So the microfilaria of Ungosaka volvulus have a strong liking for the skin and the eyes. Okay, so that's important to know. So they usually like the subcutaneous tissues. So they like the skin mostly and the eyes. So the adult worm will live up to 17 years, you can imagine. Okay, so this normally they end up forming uh, some sort of uh, nodules okay or swellings which are normally found on bony skin surfaces such as the elbows where you can feel it you can feel the the nodules the shoulder the iliac the ribs okay so it normally has four clinical these are classical presentations okay you will have severe itching okay because of the irritation on the skin so then remember the adults which have stayed there and they keep reproducing and on and so on and so on and it, we have reinfection if you're staying in an area that has this thing so much then form the nodules then you have dermatitis okay this is inflammation of the skin okay then we have blindness now this occurs normally as a complication because now if these worms now end up going to the to the eye we said it that we we have a high affinity of also going to the eye then we have some sort of blindness okay so basically this is what we're talking about of oftenly the severe itching is normally uh, what we'll see uh, as early onset okay the early symptoms and the classical thing with this is that it produces um some sort of uh depigmentation on the skin because of the scratching so much yeah? you develop what we call a leopard skin okay we'll see about that then skin nodules these are caused by the adult worms, which are now so many, and they've lived for the skin for so long, and they form a painless rubbery firm nodule. Okay, then we have dermatitis, which is caused by the microfilariae. Okay, and normally this is because of um, it's because of the microfilariae that are produced there. Then once they are produced, they they, they elicit an a, an immunological reaction. Okay. And, and then we have dermatitis, then we have blindness, and this is basically we have some sort of invasion okay, of the microfilaria into the eye, and then this causing some edema, projectivitis, and spots, and then later on we have um, blindness. So we can see here, this is a womb that has penetrated into the eye, and you can see the ultimate effects, okay? So we have corneal uh, ulceration and then panus formation, and then now there's some sort of thickness that is formed that we cannot see. 
Okay. Actually, surgery is an anomaly done on the eye to remove uh, those uh, worms. Now, we're talking about skin nodules. You can see uh, the skin nodules, and we've said uh, they are formed on different parts. You can see a skin nodule here and another one here. These are formed by the overcrowding by the adult worms. This is the itchiness we're talking about. So they will scratch the skin so much. And then we have what we call the leopards, leopard skin. Okay, good. So how do we diagnose um, this condition? It's, it's simply because the high affinity is in the, um, actually they go to the subcutaneous tissue. So what we do with the skin mostly, they do just take skin snips and then they visualize it under microscope, under microscope to actually see, actually see the micro uh, filariae. So the snips are usually gotten from the thighs, buttocks, and iliac, iliac crests. Okay, so the treatment is um, um, we have two different types of treatment. So normally people live with the oncocercosis for so long, so that's what people just ignore it and then it becomes a big issue. So the first one that is good and is the kill it kills microfilari is uh, ivermectin. Okay, so normally just a simple one single dose for six months or twelve months, depending. Second dose is normally aimed at killing or removing the adult worm by surgical um, uh, the second uh, by surgical resection of the nodule. So the second way of actually uh, doing treatment is surgical removal. So first, normally they give the ivermectin, then they can remove the adult worms to remove the nodules. So how do we prevent and control this condition? So additionally to insecticide, remember the black fly. So we have, they have to do, um, do insecticides also um, to go and kill the, 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 these flies that are breeding, okay? Also, wearing of long clothes, which cover most of, most of the body. Remember, these ones can bite you during the day when you're working. So, wearing of clothes that are, are concealing, moving the whole community away from the sites that are yeah, because sometimes it becomes very hard to to um, um, control this fly. So the the communities can can actually move. And by the way, naturally, communities you'll find them dispersed from this area naturally because they realize when they stay along this area they get uh, this disease so much. So treat, uh, treating infected people with micro filaricides and then mass treatment of communities with ivermectin. Remember if you treat the community so much, you reduce the amount of micro that can be picked by the simulium, okay? So if, for example, you have a population that doesn't, nobody has, nobody has the, the micro filariae from Kosaka volvulus, then even if you get beaten by the black fly, nothing will happen. The basically the transmission cycle will be cut. Okay, thank you very much. I hope you you enjoyed that and it helped you. So feel free again to subscribe.